Okay, so squad mates. Uh, when you complete Lair of the Shadow Broker, you get access to this advanced training terminal right in the corner. This allows you to reset your squad mate powers, which is really good. Because uh, in the main game, they didn't allow you to do that, which means some squads are stuck. You have to basically force to put a point in one of their powers. And generally, for a bunch of squad mates, their bonus powers aren't very good. And some of them are actually quite detrimental um, to their gameplay. So, this allows you to go in, so sweat your squad mate powers, and then that way you can put their points in wherever they see fit. So, what I want to do is go through the squad mates in the tournament and just show you what I think of how you should build them or possible builds. Some of them, it's like, okay, there's really only one good way to build them. Some there might be two or three, depending on how you want to play, things like that. So... Um, that's how I'm going to do it. Okay, so the first squad mate, let's go through those, is Thane. Let's reset his points. Alright, so to me, in my mind, there's only really one way to build Thane, because Shredder Ammo, not very good. In fact, it's actually downright terrible, especially on I mean, squad mates aren't doing much damage anyway. It's based off their base weapon damage, and typically they're doing about half the damage Shepard does in terms of weapon damage, so it's just not worth it. And these other powers are better than any, especially since when you're an adept. So throw, throw fields better so he can actually affect hit more than one person. Um, as much as I like heavy throw and Shepard, that's because you have full field. He doesn't have, like, obviously a, a pull, so... Throw fields better, so that way it can affect multiple people, especially good, I guess. I don't use it that much myself, because again, I'm on Xbox, so at best I can only map one power, and that's typically warp. And generally, I don't have, he's generally not in a good position to knock everyone down, but there are good ways when you can actually use throw field, usually for staggers, think that you want to stagger more than one person. But they know that's just me, but again, I think throw field's best on him. Warp, as generally squad mates with warp, unstable warp's better. Again, you can see 9 second recharge time, and since I'm only really generally using it for uh, detonating combos, that's usually really good. So it has a wider radius and they do detonate, so it staggers more about uh, people around it. Doesn't do as much damage, doesn't always kill outright, but it's good that way. And Drill Assassin. You go Marksman, or you can go Veteran for more health. Marksman gives you more damage. More damage doesn't really matter. The health you're not going to really notice. It's like either plus 20 or plus 50. You, know, you really know it's plus 20% health. Not an insanity. Whipping damage, you probably got, and again, probably won't notice that much, but it will be somewhat noticeable. Um, in terms of priorities, um, let me just reset them again quickly. In terms of priorities, generally what I do with Thane is basically two and throw them on like a warp, and then I immediately go for unstable warp. After that, it's up to you. Um, usually what I try to do is I typically, this playthrough I didn't, but typically I try to get to Lair of the Shadow Broker as quickly as possible. Um, so I can reset his points as soon as I get his uh, bonus power. Um, that doesn't really matter, I guess. But after that, it doesn't really matter. Because I typically, I just use Unstable Warp, I usually go then for his um, Drill Marksman for his weapon damage bonus. Um, otherwise, if you're, like, say, on PC, or you do a lot of pausing, pause and uh, gameplay so you can actually select what power you want, then you may want to uh, throw first, but I typically drill, go Drill Assassin. And then I go for uh, Throw Field. But it's up to you. I mean, you can go uh, Throw Field first if you want. And then Marksman. It doesn't really matter. Anyway, that's how I would build Thane. Okay, next is Jack. So reset our points here. There's actually a few ways you can build Jack. I'll show you how I build her. Typically, how I build her. Actually, I'll do show you. Usually, I go I go for pull field first since that to me is that's most important. Um, I actually like to use her early game instead of Jacob. Just. Because usually by Horizon, she has a quicker pull field. Not that it really matters a whole lot. You can probably 
Jacob might be a little better. New Game Plus, again, it probably doesn't matter. Jacob's good for uh, probably against early against Forcha, but then again, you won't have Jack anyway. But then I would usually go Pool Field. Then I would go for her cooldown bonus. Primal Adept gives her most uh, recharge time at minus 25. Primal Vanguard gives her more weapon damage. But again, it's 25%, and it's really not that noticeable compared to 8 plus 18. Plus, again, squad mates, you're doing about half the weapon damage you're doing, so again, you're not seeing it. And you're doing most of the killing anyway, either with powers or your guns, so they're really not that useful. So I would definitely go for power reach charge time. And then after that, uh, Grouse is getting her Lodicus point point warp ammo, but then as you reset her in, they basically just put it in a shockwave. Um, you go heavy shockwave, which uh, gives it more force. I wouldn't do that. I would usually go for more radius. Force usually isn't enough to kill anyone for the most part, especially on insanity. So more radius is better. Hits more people. That's what I usually do. This, so this is the build I usually build as the adept. I don't use shockwave a whole lot. I usually just have from after pull field shockwave. Shockwave is useful for some things. You want to like knock enemies out of cover or you know hit more enemies, perhaps if they're in a row, but it's really... Shockwave on her is kind of tough to use. Pull field's usually better. Um, there are other ways to build her, though. So let's just show you another way. If you don't have your war own warp ammo and you want to use like her warp ammo, like squad warp, um, I would still... Generally, because early game, you're not, you can't get into unlock her bonus power, so again, power recharge time. And then warp ammo. Get it to squad, so that way you can get it from her. That's if you want, again, if you want your own warp ammo. Uh, basically, sure, her warp ammo. And then I would put I would ignore pull and put the rest in shockwave. Again, improve shockwave for the extra radius. That's another way to build her. That's if you want warp ammo. Uh, there is a third way. I've seen someone mention that they've done this. I've never done it myself because, again, I usually typically use other squad mates. Um, once I get Thane, I usually never take Jack after that. Um, basically, if you want both pull field and you want warp ammo, one new thing you can do is if you want pull field, uh, squad warp ammo with her. And then basically just three points in her passive. And that's still good for minus 18%. It's not minus 25%, but it's actually still good. It'll still give her a quicker cooldown and pull field than some, uh, basically, say, Jacob. And it'll give you squad warp ammo so that when you lift enemies with, you know, pull or singularity, you can get a little extra damage out of your guns for it. So that's another way to build her. Again, I've never done that myself, but I have seen some people mention that they have done it that way. Okay, so Garrus. Garrus, to me, there's only one real good way to build him with the Adept. And it's not even close. Uh, basically, what I would do is two points, cuts a shot to first. And then I would immediately go for overload. And you want area overload. That's obviously good so you can remove shields. And then I would basically put all the points and Turian Rebel. So, the Renegade, he increases his power damage and weapon damage. Uh, Turian Survivor uh, increases the health damage instead of his weapons. Um, I guess that way it doesn't really matter. Again, health, you're not really going to notice. Weapon damage, uh, you're, again, you're not really going to notice. But at the same time, he's decent with the incisor, so increasing his weapon damage a bit. And again, you're really not going to health, health much, so... I just, that's why I usually go Tyrion Renegade. And then I usually reset them as soon as I can because, I mean, squad ammos are generally terrible. Warp ammo is good with the Adept because, again, it gives you a nice damage bonus against people lifted by Biotics. Um, not, not so much with AP ammo. AP ammo does extra damage against health and armor, but again, it's based off base weapon damage, and it's really not that good, I find. If you want it, you can. You could probably then skimp on Turing Renegade, I guess, but I wouldn't do it. But again, and then I would just basically reset it, put the points in cussive shot. 
Uh, heavy is gives you more force, more damage. I'm gonna go custom blast for the radius. Because really, heavy is not that good. Heavy only is one single target. And its damage isn't good. And it, even it's. It does like a. Has multiple. Does a, has a multiplier against barriers, but it's not very good. Low damage, and even it's. And it's. Uh, multiplier isn't really. Not high enough to make up for it. And in terms of protections, anyway, you've got warp for it. If you want to use your own warp, you can always take Reeve or something. Yeah, so because of blast, that's mostly for staggers. Maybe the occasional barrier damage if you want, but yeah, area overload, and then renegade for the power damage bonus. So it's real. So basically, you can guarantee that they get shields more more often than not, at least on the basic guys. And then because of blast, so that's how I built Garrus. Okay, so grunt. Grunt's terrible. I I don't like him as a squad mate. I think that what he brings to the table, other squad mates bring, and they bring it better, or they bring it earlier. Like he's got, he's got incendiary ammo, but then Jacob has that. You can get, he can get it quicker for the squad for you. Custer shot, Garrus has it, and even then, it's not that great. So again, Garrus can get it sooner. I just think Grunt's terrible. And Fortification, terrible power. All sort of shield powers on squad mates are bad because they tend to basically just spam it. Um, so he's basically at 12 second recharge time and then typically as soon as that's done, he's using it again on his own. Um, even if you put squad mates to like uh, manual power usage, they use defensive powers on their own. So Fortification, Barrier, and I guess Shield Boost they use it on their own, so that basically locks him out of his other power, so I would basically reset him out of his bonus power as soon as possible. Uh, custom shot, I would get, at least with Grunt, I would focus on incendiary ammo first, so tune custom shot to unlock it, then squad incendiary ammo, give you some crowd control with your weapons, good for preventing health regeneration on Krogan, and Vortia, but again, I'm only really taking Grunt on his own loyalty mission, so it's only decent for the few Krogans that are there. Um, Custom Shot, same as Garrus. I would go Custom Blast, just for some crowd control, some area crowd control. I'm usually not taking it beyond that. And then Krogan Berserker. He has health regeneration that it provides along the way, and plus health. I don't notice a health regeneration. It's probably really good on lower difficulties, but sanity, you really not notice the difference. So it's either more weapon damage or more health regen. It probably doesn't matter. I'll go pure blood for the health regeneration. You're really not going to notice either. And that's how I build it. Um, I've tried to take him like a bit of a tank before, but putting in fortification and it, even with the pure blood, I really don't notice a difference. But anyway, if you really want to use them, really want to use them, that then that's how I would build them. Only really good build with them, at least in my opinion. I don't see much use for fortification at all on them. Okay, so Jacob is next. Again, I only think there's really one good way to build him. Basically, barrier's terrible. Again, same issue as Grunt, where... You can't put that to manual usage. The comments will automatically use it, no matter what. And so he ends up just basically spamming that the hard time, and which basically takes him out of his good, po good power, which is pull. Um, Jacob and Miranda, again, are unique in that they don't have... That you put points in all their... Basically, their two powers instead of using... They don't need unlocks like other squad mates, which, kinda, which is good on them. Sucks for the other squad mates, since a lot of times it's like, okay, if you don't like concussive shot, you know, kind of thing. So Jacob... Uh, to start the game, you can all uh, basically spec to pull field, which I like to do typically on him, or squad incendiary ammo. Either one's good for him. It's up to you. Both are good. New game plus, both are great. Obviously, you can then do both. And then Cerberus operative. Doesn't really matter. You can go more health or more weapon damage on him. It 
doesn't really matter. Again, you're probably not going to notice the difference. Uh, I just go Veteran because it's the first one. Again, I don't notice the weapon damage a whole lot, so extra health, plus 40%. Sure. Not going to notice it, really, but... That's how I'd build Jacob. Again, barrier's terrible. Okay, so Samara's next. Samara's kind of like Jack in that there's really about three different ways you can build it, depending on what you like, what your preferences are. Um, probably the best one, the one I probably use the most. Uh, really no, way, no wrong or right way to do it. Throw field. Because you can get her later enough, you could probably, I would recommend maybe waiting on throw. Again, I would probably use Thane ahead of her for the most part if you want throw field. Oh, it doesn't really matter, I guess. Depends again. Depends how you want to build her. But in a sorry Justicar. So Kato Justicar gives her more weapon damage. Not really noticed it. So CP Justicar is the one you want. The first one on the list. Fire reach charge time minus 25%. You will notice that. And then Reeve. Heavy Reeve Reeve is single target. Heavy Reeve single target, so it does more damage over time. I should just qu quickly second here. So that he has 40 points for four seconds. So this just. Yeah, so 40 points, but just lasts longer. That way it does more damage over time. Or area, so it gives you a, an impact radius of three. I usually go area. Thing about insanity, again, there's like a minus 20% duration penalty so Reeve is affected and it does so against barriers and armor and shields it does all its damage at once so, but because of the duration penalty even if you have all six biotic damage upgrades it won't fully strip the armor off husks because I think it had the weakest amount of armor uh, so it looks like it does so but that's because they got like one point left or two points left so it actually won't strip but at the same time I find it's good because it gives you more crowd control. Um, that's why I usually go area on it instead of heavy. So yeah, so throw field, be your quickest power, good crowd control for health, area reeve, and then Sabian's Dresser Car for the cooldown bonus. That's probably the best way to build it. There are other ways. Uh, Another option is throw field, pull field, and then the cooldown. That's if you don't want Reeve, like you don't use Reeve, you don't care about it. Um, throw field and pull field are kind of redundant on her, at least in my opinion. Um, although throws, I mean pulls, not a kill on her. So that you can use that to set up yourself, like your throw or your warper, if that's if you want. Whereas, and then you can say throw a field is to kill if you pull and you have her throw to try to kill, throw them off the map. And that way you're doing reeve. Third option is kind of similar, where if you want pull field and reeve, uh, like area reeve, and you go pull field. Area Reeve, and then just have the, just the, only the 18% recharge time, and three points of sorry just occur. I've seen someone mention that they've done that before. Uh, I wouldn't do that, but again, that's just me. It's something you can try. I think if you like it, whatever. Anyway, that's that's how a couple ways to build Samara. Okay, so Samara. Or in this case, Morinth, I should say. I have to say Morinth. Listed as Samara on the screen. Okay, I had to load up another character. My only character that has Morinth alive. So as you can see, it does say Morinth this time. And this time she has Dominate instead of Reeve. So again, you could build her exactly pretty much the same way as Jack or Samara. In that... Go throw field. Alright, at Yakshi. 
power. So basically, again, you have a choice between better recharge time or better weapon damage. Recharge time. And then dominate, which is a really fun power. Um, I would go enhance dominate so that increase the duration on the single target. Or group dominate so that affects all unprotected uh, organics in a radius. I recommend Enhance Dominate. Usually what happens when you take Radius is that you get a bunch of guys fighting each other and what Dominate does it adds shields or in this case actually it adds barriers uh, at various strengths. So they end up all having barriers and they're shooting each other and then they basically once it wears off they lose their barrier you do it again and it's like oh, so it's annoying. So I usually go Enhance Dominate single target and that's why everyone else focuses on that one target. That way you can spend your time shooting someone else. So that's how I typically do it on Morinth. But again, there's more than one way. If you don't want Dominate, then again, then at that point, she just basically becomes Samara, where go throw field, bull field, Erdis Yakshi for the recharge time, and that way you don't have to worry about Dominate. Not what I would do, but again, whatever. That's if you have Morinth. Um, again, if you want pull field and say enhance dominate. Actually, there's no, there's a couple of ways you do this. If you want pull field, and there's two ways of doing it. Three points in each, and then you can either go enhance dominate. If you want to dominate all if you want to dominate maxed or if you can leave three points and dominate and then go for the recharge time up to you that might be a little better hard to say thing is you're gonna have the like a base the base recharge time is 12 base duration is nine um, okay it's not like me reset I think it's enhanced dominates 12 seconds duration, yeah. Yeah, so I would probably go that version. Go enhance dominate for the longer duration, and then just three points in already actually for the cooldown bonus. Anyway, yeah, so pool field. Yeah, so that's if you want both pull field and enhance dominate, we do something like that. Or, like I said, you can basically drop and dominate the three and then put them in R. Yakshi for the uh, cooldown bonus. Anyway, that's Morinth. Okay, so next is Morden. So, with Morden, I would prioritize Incinerate. Heavy Incinerate, Incineration Blast, so it's Heavy Incinerate does more damage. Incineration Blast for the Radius, definitely for the Radius. Heavy, Heavy has like 1.2 meters, you're not going to hit, generally you're going to hit more than one person with that. This one definitely, 3 meters. And it does, has a really good armor multiplier, which is why I would use it. And then... Crowd Blast and Biotics don't mix very well. Um, if you're in the middle of like uh, picking, uh, pulling someone in the middle of pull, and then he's freezing them with Crowd Blast, they drop out of pull. Um, and then Crowd usually sticks them behind cover. Crowd Blast plus Throw is really nice. If the once they're frozen, it's really nice. But you have to wait till they're frozen. And like I said. Otherwise, if they're in the process of freezing and you throw them, it tends to cancel out, so they just stand there. And then sometimes it actually cancels out the freeze where it looks like they're frozen and they still move around. So I usually avoid Crow on him when I'm an adept. And so I just go Incineration Blast. And so then after that, Neural uh, Slayer and Scientist. Choice between more shields or more weapon damage. Doesn't really matter. I'd go more shield, I guess. First one there. And then Neural Shock, rarely use it, but again, it doesn't 
fiddle with your uh, biotics too much. So duration, I wouldn't take duration on that. I would go the radius. Really good on him. So that's one way of doing it. That's how I would do it on him. Mostly though, you're just going to use incineration blast on him. So prioritize that first, and then everything else is pretty just just gravy on him. I mean, it's just a bonus. Um, if you want Cryo Blast, you can. It's not bad on him. I just prefer to just not. I just don't like it on the Adept. So Incineration Blast, Cryo Blast. No, actually, one thing I got to show here. So at three points, one, two, and three points, he has a nine-second recharge time. When you evolve it, either evolution, the recharge time is four and a half seconds. So it's the shortest squad mate, big base cooldown on all squad mates. Uh, you know, except the ammo powers, I should say. Um, Deep does more freeze duration. I would go full, always full, for the radius. And then, again, probably more shields there. So that's what I would do if I wanted to take Crowd Blast. I don't. Uh, if you like it, you like using it on him, great. I like I, I like using Crow, I love using Crowd Blast on him, just not when I'm the Adept, because I find it interferes with my Biotic, especially since I'm using Pull a lot. Yeah, It's good with throw, especially heavy throw, but I wouldn't take it on him. I would just take Incineration Blast so I can strip protections quickly on the missions I do take him on, and I can just pull him, shoot him. That's about it. Anyway, that's more. Okay, so next is Tally. Who is, eh, again, not very good on the app. She's really, only really all that great on her own loyalty mission, and that's it. Um, I really don't like taking her with the Adept. Combat Drone is just brutally bad on squad mates. Engineer Shepard, his cooldown time is 3 seconds. On Tally, it's 30 seconds. And it duration, 18 seconds to start. And look, duration even at rank 3, 18 seconds. Like, really? And the recharge time is 30 seconds. If you're a Sentinel, it's not too bad because they have this weird exploit where they can actually rescut their squad mates' cooldowns with tech armor. Not so much with the Adept, so it's just brutally bad in here. I would avoid using that at all costs. Um... I really like AI hacking on her. Again, I'm only really taking her on her own loyalty mission when there's a lot of a lot of geth to hack. Um, she's also good on a couple of side missions, Overlord DRC, because there's a lot of mechs to hack. Um, I would go improved AI hacking. Same as Dominate, where it's best on single target instead of multiple targets, so that everyone fires at that one, and that way they're not all having gaining shields. And then, typically what I do is then uh, go for current engineer increases your duration, whereas mechanic increases your weapon damage. Again, you're not going to notice weapon damage much. Duration, you're probably not, it's going to be a little more noticeable, generally. So, I'll go current engineer. Uh, and then after that, I usually spec her out of energy engineering because I'm not really using it on her. I'm usually using my weapons to strip shields and... If I'm using a hacking, it means I have uh, hack synthetics nearby, so that way they're not shooting me, so I can focus shooting on other things. So I'm not, at that point, I'm not using energy drain. And then I would just throw the rest of the points at combat drone, and I'm not using it at all anyway. Uh, attack drone or explosive drone. I don't know. I just take explosive drone on the squad mates. I find doesn't really make much of a difference. That's how I would build Tally. And I'm really using for air hacking. I'm not using her much at all when I'm with the Adepts, so I find there are better squad mates with her. And again, that's mostly on our loyalty mission, so I usually don't have drone at all. Usually it's like two or three points at most, and I'm usually like improved air hacking and whatever I got in Corn Engineer. I usually do her loyalty mission late with the Adept. Uh, there are other ways you can build it. I've seen people do. Um, if 
you want, you can use your energy drains to remove shields. I find Garrus is better for that with his overload since he has power damage, but again, not that bad. So I would go with that point, go area drain. Shame she doesn't get a power damage bonus, but I works a little better as squad mates, I guess. So, and then at that point, duration doesn't matter on her passive because that's just damage. So then you have a couple of choices where you can max, say, a combat drone, and then her passive, and avoid a hacking. Or, another thing you could do energy drain, go area. Oops. Get some points in AI hacking. Say three, and then either max out her. Passive for the duration, or you can max AI hacking out for the duration. Do you? Ah, undo telepoints. Screw that. Another thing I've seen people do is that they'll, they can ignore a passive completely. And then just go something like drone. And hacking like that, and just ignore a passive completely since it really doesn't matter much. That's two ways of doing it. I mean, that's a few ways of doing it. Um, that's not what I would do, but again... I would ignore drain, energy drain. I know it's good for shields with the adept, but again, I'm not... It's her loyalty power, so I'm typically only... With the adept, I'm only take, typically only taking her on her loyalty mission, so I don't have energy drain anyway, so I was just focused on hacking and her passive. Ignore the drone completely, and after that, I usually just forget her and not use her at all. So, anyway... That's Tally. Okay, so next up is Kasumi. Kasumi, I rarely take along with the Adept. Um, and again, that's usually typically a loyalty mission, so I'm usually typically... Uh, if I do that early, my choices are limited. If I take her late, I have a little bit better options. I took her late this time. I took her usually sometime after Horizon, so... Um, with the Adept... Overload's really good. Area overload to remove shields. That way you can basically try to move as many shields as possible. Area overload, then hit them with a pull field. Try to get, get groups of enemies clustered. Um, Shadow Strike's good. But I find it's not that great with the uh, with the, uh, the Adept. I find that's better for other classes, but that's just me. Flashbang, really great. Yeah, so basically it causes enemy weapons to overheat. I mean, did jams, difficulties in using bog powers, things like that, whatever it says. Basically, it just stuns enemies for a long time and they can't shoot you. Really good. Improved flashbang is incredible. Like, impact radius, 9 meters, like the widest area of, like, every, of all, like, of all powers. Recharge time, 9 seconds. It only lasts for 6 seconds duration, but... Usually by that time, it doesn't matter. Really good on her. And after that, her passive, her... I'm not sure if her weapon damage works or not. It doesn't really matter. Her health, again, doesn't really matter. Her power recharge time, which would be really good on her, does not work. Which is really the only good reason that would, you would want to invest in it. If you want to put it in points in there to increase her health or her survivability, go right ahead. I would avoid it. So the most things I've seen people seeing is just spec her out of her passes and just go Shadow Strike. Um, delete Shadow Strike increases damage. I prefer Rapid. Basically reduces cooldown by 80% if the target is killed by this power. So basically you get them on health, tell them to go hit the person. If they kill them, she goes back and then her just recharges really quick. Um, otherwise, she's in, otherwise she doesn't use it for a long time. Um... It does something like some like double damage against all defense types, but it doesn't make Deadly Shadow Strike work it. I would go Rapid. This is how I would build her with the Adept. Flashbang Grenade also this weird glitch exploit where 
if you use it on Harbinger, he's like disabled for like 30 seconds. So he doesn't do anything other than like taunt you. But he's basically taunting you for no reason. So it just completely hilarious. Completely disables him. Makes him useless on the battlefield. That's real. So Shaler, she's really good against collectors that way. Makes her area overload loses, but her improved flashbang is really good then. But on other, other missions, air overload's good. I have a chat so She's a good squad mate, but at the same time, I prefer other squad mates. In terms of overload, I prefer Garrus. Um, and then I usually typically prefer Miranda and Fane anyway. For everything else, just for so that they can detonate all my, my pull and singularity, things like that. While I concentrate and stream defense with my weapons, things like that. So... I typically don't take her beyond her loyalty mission. So I typically don't use her flashbang grenade a whole lot. It's collectors. I've done it a few times with that up, but even then I just prefer Fane and Miranda at that point. Since they also can do their warp just damage against barriers. Helps kill down Harbinger a little quicker while I'm taking on everything else. So anyway, that's just me. Anyway, that's how I would build Kasumi. Okay, next up we have Zaid. I don't use Zaid much beyond his loyalty mission. Usually just his loyalty mission and that's it. Um, so take what I say with whatever. I would never use him beyond his own loyalty mission anyway. Um, disruptor ammo is good. I usually go focus get the squad disruptor ammo first. Um, just because basically again a little bit of crowd control for your weapons. Since it can overheat weapons, disable mechs. So he's, I used him maybe a couple times on with an adept on some synthetic missions, like say, uh, recruiting Tally on her mission to Haystrom. But even then, I don't use him much beyond that. Um, at that point, then I would either go concussive shot for concussive blast for the area. Staggers, area knockdowns, things like that. And then Mercenary Veteran. So either a little more health, which you won't notice, or a little more, more weapon damage, which, again, you probably won't notice, but it helps with the Incisor and Vindicator, which you can both have, which are both good weapons on squad mates. So that's how I would typically build him. I would spec out of Infernal Grenade. Um, that being said... Infernal Grenade does have a quicker cooldown than because of Shot. Where see, because of Shot has 12 seconds, Infernal Grenade has a 9 second recharge time. The only issue I have though with Infernal Grenade is say, unlike, say, Flashbite Grenade, Infernal Grenade's radius is not a uniform radius. So what I'm saying is the radius, like Flashbang hits, anything within that radius is guaranteed to be hit. Unless, unless there's some weird areas where there's like elevated, like some elevation where it won't hit. But say if it's on a flat surface, anyone within that, say radius of flashbang, within the radius of overload, anything within the radius of incineration blast will hit. Infernal grenade, you're not guaranteed guaranteed to hit everyone in the said rate in the given radius, um, because it's infernal grenade actually blasts off in chunks. Therefore, you're guaranteed to hit the person, the one person it it hits at first. Everyone else in that so-called radius may not get hit at all. This is why I really don't like it. Quicker cooldown, yes, but beyond that, not that great. It does extra damage, like double damage against armor, but it's like 70 points over 4 seconds. I, I don't think that's a... I don't know if that is a set duration or if that takes a duration penalty or not. Um, and it's so little damage. It doesn't work. It doesn't. I did a test once, and I mean, against armor, he just can't do anything. He gets about half armor off. It's just, I don't find it that great. He doesn't hit that many people with it, so I don't like Infernal Grenade. If you really want it, then you can spec into it. I'm not sure I would take. I would... I don't know. Gets more fragments, but also increases the radius. I would take the damage version, just because 
try to shorten the radius, try to guarantee that you'll hit even with less things. Two more things, but I mean, the other one gets another fragment, but again, it's overspread over a wider radius. Not sure if we'll hit. I don't like it. I don't use it at all. Not even on him. The thing is, you still have to base it, and even if you take, say, Mercenary Veteran, I mean, the thing is, you still got points. You're still putting concussive shots, so almost wasting points in it. So I guess you could go, say, Disruptor Ammo Squad here. And then just spin it on for a little bit more weapon damage. You guys suppose, suppose you could do that. This bit can heavy inferno ammo, but to me it's just a waste. Because I mean you still gotta force points, and that's kinda why I don't like squad mate this the, sort of the power unlocks in this game. So especially with squad mates, it's like, hey, let's stick the useful useless power on the top. And then you're just stuck there with like forcing points into that. Terrible. Anyway. That's Saeed. Okay, finally we have Miranda. Miranda, again, to me, is fairly simple to build. There's really only one good build on her with the Adept. Uh, with the Adept, I would go Warp first. Again, she's kind of like Jacob, where you can put points at anything, which is really, really good. That way you could basically focus on what, you, what your strength or where you feel your weaknesses are. Again, I usually go on Steelbow Warp with her first with the Adept so I can get a recharge time, 9 seconds, on our Warp. Good for detonating. And then I should go at that point. I go area overload. I wouldn't. I don't use it much on the app because I prefer just stripping myself of my guns. But again, if you want to use area overload on her, strip things. Plus, she can do warp bombs, things like that. Makes her a really great squad mate on the app. And then at last, I would just go Cerberus officer, leader or tactician. Leader gives her more squad weapon damage. Or you can go Tactician, which gives more squad health. Either one doesn't really matter a whole lot. I would go Leader for more weapon damage. Probably won't notice it, but it'll give you that little extra boost. And then, kind of like Jacob, she has that extra point. One point in Slam. Again, she probably won't use it that much, so... You basically, you're mostly going to use Warp and a bit of Overload. So... Everything else is just a bonus to her. And that's Miranda. Okay, so last final squad mate. So first of all, spoiler alert if you've never played this game before. If you haven't, uh, I guess you're watching this guy to help you out. I don't know. Uh, so anyway, spoiler alert. This final squad mate doesn't appear until late in the game. It's supposed to be a bit of a surprise, but... So again... If you ever played this game before and you really don't care about spoilers, then yeah, continue watching. If you're worried about spoilers, don't. So the last squad mate is Legion, our little Geth companion, who, kind of like Tally, is kind of useless outside of his own loyalty mission, apart from a couple of other missions like, say, Overlord DLC. Um, the good news is with him is that he doesn't have to put points in Combat Drone. Bad news is, he basically will dump points in Combat Drone. Because <laughs> his bonus power is brutally bad. Um, guess Shield Boost, kind of like Barrier on Jacob and Fortification on Grunt. It's a shield power, it's a defensive power, which means squadmates will use it no matter what you set your squadmate power uses to. So, and he spams the crap out of that, like everything else, so it kind of makes him useless as a squadmate. So if you really want to use anything else, you're out of luck. Um, I would basically spec out of that as soon as possible. And again, you're probably not using it much anyway, so what does it matter? Um, AI hacking, I would put basically point points into. Again, improved because single target. That way, only the one target has extra sh gain shields, whereas everyone else, basically, you just while they're distracted, you take down their shields. Put them on health, things like that. And that way, you're not, they're not all fighting. All the hack guys aren't fighting each other with extra shields. They're just, just the one guy. He's fighting for you. And then Geth Infiltrator. So he has a power recharge time bonus, which is really good. Um, Assassin increases his weapon damage. Trooper increases his health. 
Um, I would just stick with Assassin for the extra weapon damage. You're probably not going to notice either. Assassin would help with his bonus, with his uh, special weapon that he can get, which is basically a, the Widow. So that's always good. And then after that, you're either... I would not put points in anything, or just them points in combat drone and... I don't know, stick it, say, explosive drone and... Leave it be. I don't know. It's really all again. All with him, all you're really going to use is a hacking and get assassin. Everything else is pretty much useless. Uh, outside of his loyalty mission, uh, drone. I suppose you could use in other missions, but again, you're looking at a 30 second recharge time, and the duration is only 18 seconds. Yeah, not that good. And minus 25 percent. Uh, recharge time, I mean, what's that going to be? Uh, pfft, drop that by a quarter. What, 2.5 seconds? Pfft. Yeah, you're looking at what, maybe 20 second recharge time then? That's still long. I don't know. I mean, that's, I mean, that's just bad. I'm sorry. Which is bad. Anyway, that's Legion.